Hey guys, Red X Rain here with another episode of Let's Play Gex, Enter the Gecko, for the PlayStation 1. Um, so I thought we'd just start here right from the beginning again, um, from the very beginning of the game, uh, and just jet our way right across to an area that we unlocked uh, last time by beating Mecha Res, uh, the final area of the game, really, in terms of the media dimension. Um, we can go to the left. Um, we do have the 26 red remotes required to ride that platform, and that takes us to, like, I guess the legitimate final area, the boss battle and that sort of thing. But by, you know, taking this path to the right, it's time. takes us straight to a TV. Uh, Samurai Night Fever. And, um, this level is, uh, unique to the game, as far as I can remember. Let's see. I'm the ultimate weapon, baby! Yeah! Yeah! Uh, unique to the game in the f regard that we can't go down this path. See, it's just clearly something over there. Um, but I think this is the only level where you have to get the first two remotes to get to the third remote. You can't just go straight for the third remote. Everything else is pretty open-ended, all the other levels. Um, you know, you can explore your whim, and, and even I've done that. Sometimes I think I'm on the path to the first one, but I end up getting the second one. And that'll actually probably happen here. We can go for remote number one or two uh, whenever we want. Oops. But, uh, but yeah, the fact remains we have to get the third one. And it has to do with these gongs, which, um, like in the earlier um, uh, Kung Fu Theater level, is used to open doors and unlock further areas. Well, that's pretty much what we have to do to get to the third remote, um, to, uh, to raise the doors that are by that, uh, by that big bridge. Um, this is, uh, this is a pretty tricky level. We're seeing definitely, I mean, it makes sense, we're, we're nearing the end of the game, uh, Makes sense that they're making things, uh, you know, a little bit more difficult. Not only in regards to the platforming, the platforming's sort of tricky on this level, especially with all the spinning platforms like this. And uh, oops, oh, oh, oh. Ooh, saved by the tongue. Um, what almost happened there? As you can see, there's uh, a lot of uh, a lot of instant death here in this level. Um, just these big open, you know black pits where pretty much once you're gone, you're gone. There are some parts of the level that are like more elevated than others. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Ooh, that's twice now. I'm really pushing my luck. There are some areas that are more elevated than others. And so if you're lucky, maybe you'll land, you know, you'd have to you'd be, be backtracking, uh, but it wouldn't be instant death or something like that. But geez, come on, man. Uh, but still, that's not something that you would, uh, you know, necessarily want to count on. And I think this guy throws stars. No? Oh, yeah, he does, but I was too far away. Sometimes the pits are good, um, because it means you can, instead of... Not that the enemies here are necessarily all that difficult, but sometimes, you know, you luck out and you can just knock them off the edge as opposed to having to um, actually... Uh, kill them with, with hits, especially like the samurai guys or the, the star throwers, you know, they take like three hits, so. Oh! 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 Push my luck. Okay. Alright, I'm back to this area, and I was, uh, I was just about to say, and it kind of just happened back there, um, the reward remote is a little tricky to get in this level. I mean, Unless you don't mind, you know, just jumping off the edge, because there's plenty of edges to jump off of. Jumping off the edge, letting the enemies respawn, and, um... You know, just sort of cheating the system that way to get remotes. Um, but since enemies fall off the edge, if you're trying to collect collectibles that way... Um, remember, if they fall off the edge like that guy, you won't get any collectibles from them. So... Makes it a little bit more difficult. Before we grab the red remote here, I'll hit the gong, and as you can see, just raises up the first gate. I know what you're thinking. It's tail time. And then we'll do the same thing again when we... Oh, yeah, see, I went for the second remote. Didn't even realize. I don't know. To me, that, you know, because you're already, like, facing forward when you enter the level and the... You know, just kind of... I don't know. To me, it seems like that should be the first remote. If only because it, you know, faces you in that direction at the start of the start of the level, but 
Whatever. Did I do the right one? I feel like that was the cutscene we just saw. Last time I was here, I was dressed as a woman. Yes! <laughs> He's pretty excited about that. Hey, whatever floats your boat, Gax, that's cool. Um, I don't know if that was supposed to be a reference to something or not. Um, but success, we did not hit... I did not get hit by the dragonfly, so I can keep this green fly for my health. And so yes, the path we're going to take this time is the one that's actually directly behind us when we start the level. And this path, I think, is quite a bit easier than the other one. Less likely to um, uh, fall off of platforms and that kind of thing. Oh, system slowdown. So sluggish. Okay. Uh, sometimes I make this jump. Usually I don't mind too much. I just sort of just take the hit. If you're quick, you can grab this one-up fly. How many lives does that make now? Let's see. Uh, oop. 44. Pretty good. I think that'll be good for the rest of the game. This is going to be <laughs> I should hope so. Uh, down there to the left, you can just kind of barely see it. Stick to the wall here. And push the D-pad up against it. You'll find a sticky pad and... Forget about it. The hidden remote. Pretty cleverly hidden. This will just take us back. There we go. Uh, okay. Now there's something over here which I don't think we saw in the last Kung Fu Theater level. Uh, these spiked... yeah. They just, they're on... oh, get moving. It's just a matter of really simple timing. Let's get it on. These, um... My tail's gonna kick your those butt. saw things, this thing that, like, tilts left and right... I really don't think that that hit me. Um, I don't know, it reminds me of something from a really old game. I'm talking, like, arcade game, but I... I don't know, it's escaping me right now. I probably shouldn't have even brought it up, but... I don't know, I just saw it and it... God, what, what, what is it? I don't know. Uh, let's wait for this guy. So, yeah, again, I'm not really worried about going for the collectibles this first run through. I want to, there we go, I want to be able to unlock um, as much of the level as I possibly can. Oh my god, I hate this platform. Oh, spinny platforms and bad cameras. Um, yeah, I think it, oh. <laughs> so, okay, apparently I did a little tricky thing there. Usually it's supposed to face you down, then you can hit this one to tilt it back up, but apparently I double tapped it and did something cool that I didn't even know I could do. Yeah, I want to unlock as much of... I want to have, like, free range, you know, over, like, the entire level before I try and go for the collectible remote. Um, sometimes ninja kicking this is a good idea. Other times it's not. Oh my gosh, I barely made it. Let's not forget to hit the gong, because I don't want to have to come back and do that platform again. And there we go. Now we've unlocked the path to the third remote. It's tail time. And we got the hidden remote along the way. Sweet. Um, and so I think what I'm gonna do is resume play. I'm gonna hop back in here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna basically take the two paths that you just saw me take, just but of course I'm not gonna get the red remotes, I'm just gonna be collecting collectibles along the way. Uh, because this third path there's definitely not enough. The art of fighting without fighting gets. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys back in this general area in, uh, in, uh, just a couple of seconds for you. Alright, so, we've taken on both of those previous paths, and now we can go down this, uh, brand new path. Having just gone through... How many do I have? 31. And I'm on the third one, so pretty good. Should be enough. Uh, this is a really tricky area, because the swinging. Um, this, you just gotta, like, believe. You just gotta commit to it. My biggest advice is to just go forward, and then just keep going forward and jump. Because once you're on this one, the camera is unruly. It is terrible. So you kind of just gotta cross your fingers and hope that you make it. And... Eh, half the time you do. 
Alright, let's see if we can get some collectibles from this guy. Do not fall off the edge. Thank you. Yeah, in, uh, in retrospect, you know, playing through this, I definitely don't like this level as much as I like the very first one. Uh, I think Mao Zedong is the name of the level. It was back in, like, the central hub uh, area. And there's, like, no way to get all three of those without falling on the lava. I don't think it's worth it. I'm doing pretty... Well, as I just voluntarily jump onto it. But, yeah, there's not as much environment interaction in this um, Kung Fu Theater level. There's a few vases just kind of sprinkled around. Oh, gosh, come on. Um, but that's what I loved about that first one, that first Kung Fu Theater. Oh, you bastard. See, he fell into the lava. Now I can't get the collectibles. Let's not rush here. I only got one more thing of health. Uh, but yeah, not a whole lot of... Yeah, I love that first uh, first Kung Fu Theater level. You break all the windows, and there's doors to break. This one, eh, it's more about just platforming and that kind of thing. But what can you do? Really? Oh, shit. Well, you know, it was probably for the best, because I, I was just about to say before I died, there's really not a whole lot of collectibles past, like, this point. There's this samurai guy and there's this firehead guy, but other than that, there's, I think there's, like, one enemy, like, on the roof, but I would hate to have gotten up there anyway and not have been able to get the reward remote, so... All's well that ends well, I suppose. And that means we can just totally avoid that guy and any future enemies that we run into, which, again, now that I think about it, I don't even know if there are any uh, along the way. The only enemy here is the camera. Doing a lot better on health this time through, as you can see. I've got uh, my green fly with me, so I have a little bit of room for error. Speaking of which, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Save time. Yeah, this, uh... Oh this, <laughs> this, uh, this playthrough for me, this thing that I'm recording right now, man, it's... Oh my god! Serious! Case in point, the Let's Players Curse. When I did my practice run of this, I did this, like, whole thing. It's like a whole freaking level. All three remotes, reward remote, hidden remote, in about... 16 minutes and that's including like the backtracking for you know that I cut out in this one and then it comes time to actually do it and man uh, okay so there are some fire breed there's at least one I think there's another one on the other side but we're not gonna worry about that oh and there's a samurai dude that's right but we don't even need to worry about that we got everything we need and where do we at? Um, with editing, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna do. Uh, let's do. Go ahead and do a bonus level. Um, let's see. Right, because okay. <laughs> Before I committed to that, I should have waited. I, I was pretty sure that. Oh my goodness. That's right. Okay, so technically we've opened up the final level of the game, the final boss fight against Rez. Uh, and I'm just riding these platforms back around just to get back to sort of the central hub so we can go to our... Oops, oh, there's the level that I was just talking about, the level that I like. Because they put the bonus level that we just unlocked way the hell the way over here. It's tail time. All right, find items in the given time. However, this is really different from all of the other. At least I'm not at the DMV. All of the other uh, bonus levels, because as you can see, it's actually just one room. And the way that you get the collectibles is by hitting this gear thing, and that unleashes these little little bugs. I mean, I guess that's why it's called bugged out. Um, and you just hit them. I mean, they are standard enemies. We've seen them before. Oops. Um, and that's how you get the collectibles. It's really not very hard. As long as you average, um, hitting two bugs, like, per, not round, but, you know, every time you hit the gear, three of them come out. So as long as you, basically, as long as you average, like, two each time, 
it shouldn't really be a problem. Um, they tend to stick to the walls, uh, and that's pretty much the strategy that I recommend. Ooh, I got all three that time. Terminator, stick to the walls. Um, I, uh, sorry, I blanked out there for a second. Uh, even though I didn't follow my own advice there and it, it worked. Um, I would recommend killing as many of them as you can first, and then going back for the collectibles that they drop. You usually have enough time, like, the collectibles stick around for, uh, you know, they stick around for quite a while, so... Enough time that you can hit them, leave them, so you get all three, and then pick up all... Th well, technically, you'd be getting all nine collectibles. There's that, like, static pit at the bottom. Thankfully, it's not instant death, it's just, uh, just takes away one health, and they give you two health flies here, so, um, oops, as I aptly demonstrate the static pit, uh, yeah, we should be okay. Um, I probably should have, well, I probably could have been a little bit more swift there and gotten the last two. How did I end up with two? They drop three each time. No, it's not important. The important thing is we got it with 16 seconds to spare. Not my best. But we got it. Sweet. So, I mean, it's kind of mundane. It's kind of repetitive. It's not particularly challenging, especially for, like, this late in the game. But I give them kudos for um, switching up, finally, switching up the uh, bonus levels. Because they, they were getting very linear and very... Um, kind of mundane in their own way. Not that I don't like them, I mean, there's some really great designs to those bonus levels and that sort of thing, but uh, it reaches a point where it's, it's, it's definitely harder to get the silver remotes to unlock the bonus levels than it is to play the bonus levels uh, themselves. That's just, just one man's opinion, I suppose. Um, but that'll definitely be enough for today, so I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna ride this platform uh, well, kind of back to where we were. Here's the Kung Fu Theater level, and then we just got one more level over here. It's a Rocket Channel level, Pain in the Asteroids, but we'll definitely save that for next time. So, as always, thanks for watching. Please like, please subscribe, and uh, please comment. Uh, I do always appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time as we take on uh, this, uh, this Rocket Channel level. Okay, until then, bye.